A holy grail of the HIV vaccine field is to elicit broadly neutralizing antibodies by vaccination. And here we've shown in humans that we can start that process. People are very used to hearing about the coronavirus spike protein and how all the vaccines are trying to induce antibodies against the spike protein to prevent the virus from infecting your cells. And it's the same thing for HIV, generally speaking, but the spike protein on HIV viruses is much more devious. HIV has millions and millions of different strains. And that means that antibodies against one virus, against one HIV spike, will not block another HIV spike. And so HIV is not really one virus. It's really like 50 million different viruses around the world right now. We have to elicit antibodies that bind to specific patches on the spike that don't change very much. People in the field, including my colleague Dennis Burton and others have discovered what are called broadly neutralizing antibodies against HIV that bind to these conserved patches. But for a vaccine to work, it first interacts with, with what are called naive B cells and very few of them will be able to bind a certain antigen and those few will expand and gain mutations and gain affinity and learn how to neutralize the pathogen. And in this case, if you want to elicit specific kinds of broadly neutralizing antibodies, the antibodies that bind to the conserved patches on the HIV spike, the first shot of the vaccine needs to trigger the right naive B cells, the very rare naive B cells that have the right properties that would enable them to eventually develop into a broadly neutralizing antibody. And it was realized back around 2009, 2010, that the naive B cells that have the properties to develop into broadly neutralizing antibodies, they're actually so far away in terms of the number of mutations that they don't bind very well to HIV proteins. And that means that if you want to make a vaccine that elicits broadly neutralizing antibodies, at least the first shot in the vaccine probably can't be an off the shelf HIV protein because it's not going to trigger the right starting B cells. And we started working on that problem. And over the years with other people involved and lots of other collaborators, we developed this immunogen that uh, ultimately got tested in this clinical trial. This sequential vaccination is really a series of vaccinations that one leads to the next. So each vaccination will result in a pool of what we call memory B cells. And each B cell has an antibody on its surface. And then the next shot of the vaccine will come and trigger those memory B cells and get them to mature further in the right direction and on and on. And finally, the last shot, the job is to actually convert the memory B cells into plasma cells, which again will secrete antibodies. And in this case, we need them to be secreting broadly neutralizing antibodies against HIV. So no matter which one of the 50 million different strains of HIV they were exposed to, the collection of all the different uh, broadly neutralizing antibodies that had been elicited by the vaccine would be enough to block that virus. In the trial, we were testing for the first time whether this concept would work. And we were testing it with one particular vaccine candidate. And the question was simply, if you vaccinate human beings with this vaccine candidate, will it find the right naive B cells and trigger them and cause them to expand and form memory B cells that have the right properties? And the answers were, it totally worked. Nearly every vaccine recipient produced the response we were looking for. And the, the memory B cells that were the sort of the output of our vaccine are pretty darn mature. I mean, they don't know how to neutralize HIV yet. They can't do that and we didn't expect that they would, but we have studied them and now we have a good idea for what our second shot should look like. And a key aspect of the trial, as in any phase one clinical trial, is to determine safety. Is the vaccine safe? And gratifyingly, in our case, it was completely safe. We had no serious adverse events. So I think, you know, the take home message for us is 
A, it showed that the concept is valid, it has a chance of working, and also that the actual specific vaccine candidate that we tested here is pretty darn good. We thought going in that this is a test of proof of principle, and if we can show the strategy works, but maybe the actual vaccine itself isn't that great, we need to go back to the drawing board and improve it. We were ready for that outcome, but that's not the outcome we got. I mean, you can always make something better, but the results are were surprisingly strong and positive. And so for the moment, we don't need to revise it. We can just start building on our first candidate, which is really nice and it saves us a lot of time. I and all of my people in my lab and collaborators have been living this for a long time. And you put your hopes and your dreams in a project, but it's very rewarding that it worked. But that's combined with the fact that, you know, we have not solved the problem yet. We, this is just one step. And so it's just renewing our determination to keep going and working really hard and trying to turn this uh, into a complete success, which would be inducing broadly neutralizing antibodies in humans.